Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome back to the sixth season of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I am Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Geico 500 here at Talladega Super Speedway as we're getting set for 29 laps of racing at one of the big beasts in all of motorsports. But I am not alone for this race. Please welcome for, I believe, the first time to the commentary booth, if not second time, Please welcome, who's funny enough, our poll sitter for today, Cole Deaver. Don't mess with him, otherwise you go on the wheel of death. Woohoo! Hey everybody, it's Cole Deaver, a.k.a. Dark Knight Cole. This is indeed my first time here in the Marvel Studios Cup boost. Thank you for having me, Levi. And I could have swore you said sex season, but then you said I got my brain back together and it was six. Yeah, I have a tough time trying to say sixth as prominent in both, most of my videos because how do you say a TH after an X? That's difficult, but anyways. Uh, sixth. There we go. All right, anyways, so before we take a look at the starting lineup, point standings coming into the race today as we are getting closer and closer to the end of the season. In fact, after today, three races remain. And after our previous race at Atlanta, Jessica Shelton's points lead extended to 47 points over Rob Evans, 3rd Anthony McCreary, 4th Benjamin Miles, 5th Jake Baskinger, 6th James McLeod, 7th Caleb Kilburn, 8th Cole Deaver, 9th DJ Curtis, and then 10th Chris Dollerton. But from 8th on back to 15th, it is separated by 20 points. So anything can change within those several positions in the point standings, especially after today, considered Talladega is a total crapshoot. But um, let's take a look at the starting lineup. Uh, the star starting in the last row, we have Jonathan Zorlin and Cody Lamas. Top 10, Cole Deaver on the pole for today. Starting next to him is Carson Gum. Row 2, Melissa Alexander and Cole Baker. Row 3, Dylan Young, James Shelley. Row four, Kyle Matthews and Jake Baskinger. Not Kyle Benjamin, Matt. Kamikaze. <laughs> Thank you. And then row five, Matt McIntyre and Rob Evans. Let's get the command to fire engines for the Geico 500 at Talladega. Drivers, stop your engines. Gentlemen, start your engines. Hey, they they moved and synchronized with me. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Ooh, that is a nice Mountain Dew car out there in front. Are you okay? Good. There you are. So as all 40 drivers get onto the racetrack for their pace lap before we get to the green flag. So with uh, Talladega, especially considering this is, I believe this is the same version we used earlier in the season, which is the 2006 pre-paved version. I say pre-paved because this was before the track got repaved later in 2006. But also because when we ran here last time, we actually had one of the better Talladega races we've had in a long, long time. Can can history repeat itself today? We'll see. But, um, yeah, a lot of different drivers in, up here in the top ten. You got some championship contenders, some not-so-championship contenders, some rookies, some legends, so on and so forth. So, Cole, what do you expect to see out of this race, considering this is with the restrictor play race package that we're using at tracks like Talladega Daytona with the new EXE, CTS physics, and low CPU strength. I just want to see some great plate racing, and, and let's also not forget that the big one could be around the corner. I don't know what the big one's track history is on a, in your series, especially on restrictor plates. But it's always a factor when you come to tracks like this. Indeed, there is always the chance for the big one. 
But I will say Thank this. You. But I will say this, no pit strategy in this race because they won't even have to come to pit road. Anyways, the pace car pulls into pit road, and ladies and gentlemen, you know what that means. That's it right. Ends. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it is time to... Boogity, 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 let's go racing. Aw, it isn't time to spin the wheel of death. Anyway, the number eight car is going to try to get up out in front here with the shove from, I believe that's the six right behind him. But I do know that is indeed Dylan Young, who is now trying to make a pass for second. But Cole Deaver out in front. Uh, no, Dylan Young is going to put Cole Deaver in the sucker hole. And coming to turn four, it looks like Dylan Young is going to lead the first laps here at Talladega. Don't want to say that too. Yep. And Kyle Matthews in second. Uh... Let me pull up my car list here. Uh, that is DJ Curtis up in the four car who put Kyle Matthews up to the high side. Uh, Levi, I'll let you commentate. Well, anyways, yes, Dylan Young did lead the first lap, and then right there behind Dylan Young, two teammates about got into each other. DJ Curtis and Matt McIntyre in the 14 car from Curtis McIntyre Racing. Co-owners, in fact, almost getting together as now DJ Curtis takes the top position on the racetrack and dj curtis like i said last week he's been having a pretty good season ninth in points currently despite dropping after atlanta as right now one of those championship contenders benjamin miles coming up to the lead but right behind is the points leader and the dominant driver of the season jessica shelton you sure it ain't benjamin matthews no <laughs> and somebody has actually lost a draft. Who is that? That's Tim Fiegel in the 15 who has just lost the pack. So he's definitely hoping for a quick caution to get back up into the pack and continue to race it out. Sheldon leads for now, but here comes McLeod, James McLeod underneath. I was going to say, Fiegel might have a gearbox problem or something. They, if they get they can get a quick caution they're gonna have to dive down on the pit road and see what is wrong with that car because it it can't be good if they can't keep up and meanwhile i think that's cole deaver yes he will indeed lead his first laps and then right behind him is two-time winner of the season rafael leduc who if i recall the last play race that we ran which was bermuda he came out with the victory, so he's been able to get it done on the restrictor play tracks this season. And now he's looking to perhaps go for the race lead already with help from the 66 of Bradley Zorg Dragger, a.k.a. the man with the most heavy metal name ever. <laughs> I have to mention that every now and then, because that, that name, Dude. Bradley Zorg Dragger, is so heavy metal. Dude, they, that Zorg Dragger sounds like a friggin' metal band that sounds like an album name or a band name. Well, you know, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I ought to ask him, maybe I'll start a band and call it Zorg Dragger. He'd probably be like, nah, I don't want to name a band after myself. But anyways, look at this three wide, several rows oh, deep. Geez. Oh, but they just wrecked. There's a few cars that have just wrecked them in the back. Right, James Qualls was the one that got the worst of it. Anthony McCreary got a piece. Carson Gum and his teammate Cole Baker was involved, but oh, Matt McIntyre actually got some damage, so about a five-car incident brings the caution out for the first time, but they are still three wide for many, many rows. Up here at the front, I believe it's Kyle Matthews with the lead? Yes, indeed. Although, may not be for long, because here comes Chris Dollarton in the nationwide car underneath, and it looks like Dollarton will lead the caution. And yes, Chris Dollarton does lead, and this will definitely save Tim Siegel. Yeah, it looks like the wreck happened right up here in the middle of one and two, which is very, very rare 
to have happen here at Talladega. I mean, we used to have wrecks all the time in 1 and 2 back in the old Walmart Cup days, but here in Marvel Studios Cup, most notably the big ones happen on the SPAC stretch, but we had one off of in the middle of 1 and 2, and uh, Chris Dollerton leads the way, but we're going to take a look at the replay of what brought the caution out for the first time today here at the Geico 500 at Talladega. Well, uh, we're about to uh, we're about to see why four wide never works. Take it away, McIntyre. Well, I mean, four wide can work. It's just in this instance, for some reason, they weren't giving each other enough room, and Joshua Sakuli was just the meat in the sandwich between Melissa Alexander and Emmanuel Hardnett. Gets up into the six, up into the sixty-one, and then the seventy. It was almost like a domino effect. As the 70 and the 61 came back up the racetrack, collecting Matt McIntyre, Cole Baker, and Carson Gum. But luckily, we got away with only a five car incident. I don't know if any of these guys are going to be out of the race. Maybe they'll continue, but they will be off the pace depending on who got what in terms of damage. Could you imagine if that happened, like in the upper part of the pack? Yeah, that could have been a major, major problem right there for sure. But from what we've seen so far, despite this, they've been racing really, really clean at three wide. Four wide, like I said, it can work. It's just a matter of driver etiquette of giving each other get, room. You got to give each other room and got to let them through. Otherwise, that's going to happen. And with that said, let's go ahead and take you to the restart here at Talladega. So the only casualty of war right now appears to be Carson Gum. There is a, another car multiple laps down. Uh, I believe that's James Qualls. Yes, James Qualls is a lap down. Carson Gum, unfortunately, I guess, had some mechanical issues after that wreck and is going to be the first car out of the race. Still 39 cars on track, 38 on the lead lap. But Chris Dollerton is your race leader. Second is Charles Sanford. Third, Jonathan Zorlin. Fourth, Kyle Matthews. Fifth, Joshua Collard. Sixth is Cody Lamas. Seventh, Jessica Sheldon. Eighth, Trent Dunham. Ninth, Dylan Young. Tenth, Jay Jefferson. Eleventh, Jake Rogers. Twelfth, Zachary Fitzwater. Thirteenth, Raphael LeDuc. Fourteenth, Johnny Gardner. Fifteenth, Phil Parker. Sixteenth, Bradley Zorgdrager. Seventeenth, Jake Baskinger. Eighteenth, Joey Parkhill. Nineteenth, Cole Deaver. Twentieth, Seth Cole. 21st, Jordan Forbes, 22nd, Dylan Pote, 23rd, Dylan Jacobs, 24th, James Shelley, 25th, James McLeod, 26th, Logan Bradley, 27th, Michael Norman, 28th, DJ Curtis, 29th, Benjamin Miles, 30th, Rob Evans, 31st, Emmanuel Hartnett, 32nd, Joshua Sakuli, 33rd, Caleb Kilburn, 34th, Melissa Alexander, and then 35th, Tim Fiegel, and then 36th, Cole Baker, 37th, Anthony McCreary, 38th, Matt McIntyre, and then 39th, a lap down on the inside, is James Qualls. Now, there is, now, as we take green flag, we're going to have to see how Baker and those last, if they're able to keep up, and another thing they'll see is was Beagle able to get his mechanical issues resolved at the start of the run? Yeah, especially that caution was very helpful for that 15 car to get back up into the pack. Green flag back out, but we're going to stay with the 70 of James Qualls and watch how he's going to maneuver through traffic and see if he's off the pace or not. And right now, it's really hard to tell since they're just now getting up to speed, but I think maybe Qualls might still be, his engine might still be up to speed and hang in the pack and not cause any problems. So perhaps we have gotten away with uh, not having any uh, drivers getting held up in a big way. Back up at the front, Jonathan Zorlin takes the race lead over. Yep. The world ain't gonna take the lead. Kyle Matthews still hanging around. So, uh, looking like Kyle Matthews is definitely gonna be one of the cars to look out for. And as soon as I say that, he gets shuffled up. Zorlin coming to take his first lap sled. And look at the push that Trent Dunham gave Cody Lamas going into one. 
And that was a full head of steam. Then again, that bottom lane is where you want to be for the most part. As you can tell, the bottom lane really kicks in we in got the middle of corners. As Llamas hey. led right there, but now they're going to leave him hanging as here comes Trent Dunham to the inside. I hate to take, your, take, take the camera off the action, but uh, we got a second pack back there. Is that all the cars that, uh... Yep. Yeah, it looks Ooh. like, uh, yeah, the cars that are not up here in the draft that perhaps got some damage that affected their motors or just got held up. Melissa Alexander, Caleb Kilburn, Tim Fiegel, Anthony McCreary, and Cole Baker, and then Matt McIntyre way off by himself. So I think that perhaps these guys got held up by the 14 of Matt McIntyre, maybe, and that's how these guys ended up further back here. Man, Beagle cannot catch a break today. Nor has he really caught a break this whole season. Despite a win, he's near last in the point standings. Only 11 points ahead of dead last in points being Jordan Forbes. And it's just not been a well-done season for Tim Fiegel, who's actually not coming back after this season. Or if he will come back, it won't be for a while. But back up here at the front, speaking of farewell drivers... Jake Baskinger in his final season of the series, who's in contention for the championship right now, leading the way with help from Dylan Jacobs behind him. Bat Baskinger trying to hold off that high lane, but but I'm pretty sure he's going to get a full head of steam going into two here. Nah, we get a gorgeous helicopter shot that high lane getting some steam yeah perhaps it's because more cars elected to go up to the outside lane hence how they oh. were able to hang on above the bottom group but now the bottom lane starting to kick back in just a bit but the outside not giving up very easily dylan poteed leading the outside line and wow imagine if that would have been the finish that would have been amazing but Baskinger still leads for now, but Poteed really hanging on strong on the outside. I give credit to that to Poteed team. They they're able to take a car to the outside and hang in there with the bottom, and we're about to get three wide for the lead here. Yeah, Dylan Jacobs nope. tried to make it happen, but Poteed almost blocked the 78, but the 78 is there, so Dylan Jacobs still looking for his first win of the season, the defending series champion. But now he just went up and left the bottom open for the Daytona 500 winner, Michael Norman, who actually also won the previous race at Atlanta just a couple of days ago. But now Michael. look who's coming up here. Benjamin Miles, who is in the top five in points, trying to close in on the points lead to try and battle for the championship. Even mm -hmm. Rob Evans, I see, who was third on the bottom lane, but gets forced to the outside as here comes Logan Bradley, who dominated Atlanta a couple days ago, but came up short for the victory. Could he try to go for win number two of his career this season? Right now he's up at the front to make it happen. But, man, you got a lot of new contenders up here. Emmanuel Hartnett, who was actually involved in that first wreck, he's back up here at the front with help from Jordan Forbes in the 77. Forbes now with help from Cole Deaver to try and get a push going to get to the lead. And Jordan Forbes, who is dead last in points. Now up at the front here at Talladega with help from Deaver, who in turn is getting help from the points leader, Jessica Sheldon. But Sheldon feels it's go time to try and get back up to the front as she's going to try and get not only to second, but perhaps the lead. Here she comes with help from DJ Curtis. Gee, that was a well of a run the O2 got there from Curtis. And I, I, I don't know if Sheldon's led today, but if this... If she gets this lap led, oh, Curtis, I spoke, maybe I spoke a little too soon, but Shelton can lead this lap. This is not going to help everyone else in the point. 
but no, it is going to be Curtis at the line. Oh, but they're going to catch up to Matt McIntyre, who is slowing oh. off the pace. What line is he going to hold up? It looks like he's holding up the bottom for now. That is until he decides if he decides to move up, which it doesn't look like he's going to. The bottom lane gets held up by the slower machine of Matt McIntyre, which is going to help that outside line go right on by. Hey, Matt, Matt McIntyre just needs to put it in the pits, but but what can what can you do with an AI? Yeah. And now, as a result, it's sort of caused a bit of a separation in the pack, as now Matt McIntyre is going to hold up the outside lane as he lets Shelly and those who are on the inside go, finally. But now Pote, who was towards the front a little bit ago, now he's going to be dropping back to the back as a result. But if they can, if they can get around, uh, if they can get around this guy uh, really quick, then if they could just get around this uh, slow car really fast, and then hopefully catch a draft of the pack, they'll be back up there within like two laps, give or take. It looks like everyone will, although Jake Baskinger's still getting held up. Although the 54, now he finally drops to the bottom. Now they've all dealt with the 14, but now it's time to see if these guys, these stragglers, like Baskinger, LeDuc, and Lamas can catch back up to the pack and still race for the win. Back up at the front. Back up at the front. Looks like Logan Bradley led at the line, but Benjamin Miles once again trying to go for the lead. Man, this is why this is why Talladega is such a great track because it's literally a crapshoot. Same with dice and, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, same with Daytona. Same with Bermuda. Same with a uh, bunch of the play tracks, Pensacola. But anyways, Benjamin Miles left the bottom open as here comes Michael Norman again to the front. Michael Norman taking that NXT Chevrolet to the lead once again. And he got help from Zorlin. Yep, Jonathan Zorlin up here, and he had help from the 26 of Joey Parkhill, but Parkhill got a little bit tight in the entry of the trioval, helping for Joshua Collard, who's also having his farewell season. Same with Trent Dunham right behind him. There's a, quite a few legends in this series that are on farewell tours. Most notably Joshua Collard, Trent Dunham, Jake Baskinger, Anthony McCreary, Dylan Pote, James McLeod, Tim Fiegel, Emmanuel Harknett. All those guys will not be returning after this season or they're going to be on a long hiatus. As meanwhile, Trent Dunham takes the lead. Funny enough, speaking of Trent Dunham, now up at the front, but right behind him is Seth Cole in the 98. And Seth's going to drop to the inside to try and go for the top spot on track. Seth Cole trying to... Seth Cole going to bring that car around. Def, he's going to get his first lap sled today, and he's got Dylan Young and Kyle Matthews right behind him. And we got nine laps to go here at Talladega, and still plenty of time for anybody, even if they're in the very back of the pack. And according to what I see, it looks like Cole Deaver's the last car in the pack. But it doesn't matter because Talladega, your friends are where you find them to work your way up to the front. And speaking of that, Dylan Young going to try and get the lead back, who I believe led the first lap and now yeah. trying to lead again. And he's got help from fellow forward Phil Parker. Hey, uh, Levi, where's that? See, see if you can get a camera shot of where the 14's located. So that, because... Looks like he's okay. in the middle of three and four, and he just got passed by that second group of cars. But Tim Fiegel, he's off by himself, I guess. Something mechanically, yeah, is definitely it. wrong with that 15 car. They weren't. They weren't ever able to get it fixed. So, Fiegel hit. Not only is this his farewell well tour, but it all of his hopes and dreams of doing well are going farewell. As meanwhile, Charles Sanford up to the front now, with help from James Shelley and Jessica Shelton right behind. But now Shelton, gonna try and get up to second. It's Jessica Shelton. I still feel for her from what happened at the Denver Roval race just a couple of days ago. She had that race won 
until the final lap coming out of the final corners, getting having to come to pit road and missed the checkered flag by one pit stall. So she's definitely been a woman on a mission to try to get her fourth win of the season and try and wrap this championship up. And right now leading the way, but new contenders Jay Jefferson coming up into the picture now. And can he get underneath Shelton? Couldn't quite right there, but now he's there. It looks like someone in the pack's dropping off pace. Who is that, Leva? Uh, looks like that is Joey Parkhill in the 26, lost a little bit of the draft. I don't know if he can catch back up unless James Qualls kind of drops just a tad and then the 26 could get his draft, but... Right now, it ain't looking too good for the 26, and I think he's actually losing it, so there goes his chances of potentially winning us. Look at this three wide, so many rows. Hold your breath, ladies and gentlemen. How many laps to go? Six, less than six to go here at Talladega. Oh, yeah. And look at Chris Dollarton with a push from Jordan Forbes. Dollarton, who it's led during the caution earlier. He's trying to get back up here to the front again. Levi, it's crunch time. It's balls and wall. You need to go crazy right now. Oh, and Dawson's about to get passed by Forbes, who does not own a magazine company, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, Jordan Forbes is part of Kamikaze Racing, teammates with Jay Jefferson and Dylan Jacobs. I thought they went four wide for a second, but no, I guess I was just seeing things. And like I just said, Cole Deaver at one point was in the very back of the pack like two or three laps ago, and now he's back up here at the front. But he opened the bottom up for Dylan Jacobs to get back up here. Well, that, well, uh, you, you might want to be on the high lane right now because I have no idea where, the, where that 14 car is and... If he does what he did before and hold up the low lane, that high lane, they're coming up on him. Yeah, they're coming and, up uh, on both Fiegel and McIntyre, so this is going to really make things difficult. But they're four wide again. Oh, like, be careful there, guys. I know you can make four wide work, but give room. I don't know. And there they go. The big one has just go. struck at Talladega. Hard hits for a lot of drivers. Oh, Who's all involved? Oh my, they're still wrecking. Numerous cars, including Seth Cole, James Shelley. That's two out of, I believe, four or five of the Backmarker Motorsports cars. Chris Dollarton, who was up at the front just a few moments ago, he was involved. Looks like LeDuc got through. Sheldon might have got through. Same with Matthews, but I see some damage on Phil Parker, Johnny Gardner. Dylan Poteet, Bradley Zordrager, there's Dylan Jacobs. Don't know about Charles Sanford. Cole Deaver was in there, too. But Dang. the lucky thing for this caution, this helps Baskinger, Melissa, and Kilburn, who were not damaged, to get back up into the pack and maybe still have a shot. Well, actually, no, I think the race is going to end under caution because I just realized it's three to go. So I think whoever led at the line, let's see who it is, Joshua Sakuli. Sakuli out of Sakuli like an RKO out of nowhere. Yeah, Joshua Sakuli got to the lead at the line at the moment of caution. He might have just won this thing. I believe he's going to get the win because I don't think we're going to get back to racing under green because of that because we're now at three to go. So Sakuli might as well have just gotten this win handed to him right there because of all this. But. And plus, and plus, Levi, even if we did restart, look at what's behind Sakuli. The two slow cars. Yeah, so he's got two picks right there to help him out. But regardless, let's take a look and see what brought the caution out for the final time today here at Talladega. Well, you can't really say anything, Levi. It was crunch time, and these guys were just, they, they wanted to go. Yes, yeah, right there you see it's four wide with Trent Dunham, DJ Curtis, James McLeod, and Chris, uh, Cole Deaver. And then, as you're going to see, it looks like DJ Curtis just gets really tight being in the middle of the track, comes up into both Tweenix cars of McLeod and Poteet. But the real action gets started right there as McLeod comes down into Logan Bradley, up the track, 
into Dylan Jacobs and Cole Deaver, and then that just completely blocks the racetrack. And right there, you saw Kamikaze hit hard after he ricocheted off of DJ Curtis and then down in front of Trent Dunham, and then just more and more cars get in there that sustained damage. You saw Zorg Dragger. Yeah. Sheldon, I think, just got through with a, just a scrape didn't hit anybody hard enough to get major damage. So once again, Jessica Sheldon showing why she's been arguably the best driver so far in season six and just got through yet another big one. But man, that was about almost half of the field that sustained some kind of damage. And then look at this battle coming to the caution flag between Rob Evans and and Joshua Sakuli, and it looks like as we watch, yep, Sakuli just went right on by with ease, and then Emmanuel Hartnett just got held up by the slower car of Matt McIntyre, and that's what ultimately is going to give the win over to the 10 of uh, Joshua Sakuli. But with that said, let's take you to the checkered flag here at Talladega. And coming down to take the checkered flag, Joshua Sakuli is going to take this one under caution, and second is two cars back. Uh, yeah, Levi so was... um, so yeah, we're coming through to Trioval now, and the checkered flag is getting ready to wave as this race ended due to the big one. And Joshua Sakuli finally, I believe, yes, gets his first win of the season. He wins the Geico 500 at Talladega. And like uh, Cole said before we went to the caution replay, he was like an RKO out of nowhere there at the end. Managed to get through everything and somehow, some way, hold off Emmanuel Hardnett, Rob Evans to get to the lead. And then, because we're under caution, he gets the victory. So, congratulations to Joshua Sakuli for his first win of the season. But let's look at the rest of the results. Rob Evans, much needed good run in second to close in on Jessica Sheldon in the point standings to try and get the championship. Emmanuel Hardnett with a finish in the third position. Solid run for him. DJ Curtis, despite being involved in the big one, still came through to, to get a fourth place run. And then Michael Norman rounding out the top five in the fifth position. Joshua Collard with a great run in the sixth spot. Trent Dunham, solid performance in seventh. Logan Bradley, great run in eighth. Jake Rogers in ninth. And then Cody Lamas, rounding out the top 10 and then there is your top 20 top 30 and then the uh lucky drivers that managed to stay ahead of the bottom five to still get points were dylan jacobs and james mcleod however the bottom five who will not be scored points are cole deaver dylan poteet seth cole bradley zorg dragger and carson gum so tough break for those guys but with that being said, thank you guys for watching the Geico 500 at Talladega, and I'd also like to thank Cole Deaver for stopping by the booth today. Hey, no problem. Thanks for inviting me, even though I got sent into the wall and nearly died from a big one accident. It's okay. Don't worry. I'll spin the wheel of death <laughs> later. I'm looking at you, Curtis. Anyways, um... Thank you guys for watching as here are your final results, rookie points, and regular points heading into our next race, which will be the return to Lime Rock. And I can't wait to see how the race is going to be this time around at Lime Rock, especially with pitch strategy going to be a big thing. But then after Lime Rock, California, and then the finale at the best track on the schedule, Kansas. But until then, this is Levi McIntyre signing off.